welcome to Foundation for Drawing. Today we're going to look at the basic pencils to be used, other equipment, and pretty much how to get started. What the differences are in the pencil grades, how to hold your pencil correctly, and how simple it is to really do what you need to do. Alright, so first up we have our pencil sharpener. I just have a double barrel one. In all honesty, I very rarely use it, but it's there because most people will need it to get started. Down here, basic plastic eraser. Nothing too crash hot, it just gets the job done. You don't want a super cheap one. They need to be half reasonable, otherwise it will rip your paper to shreds if you are working on something. This is blue tack. Blue tack can be used in replacement to an eraser very, very simply, and I will show you as we get ourselves going. Pencil wise, today we're keeping it very straightforward 2H, HB, 2B, and 4B. The 2H is my foundation pencil, this is where it all starts from. When it comes to the pencil grades, H stands for hard and B stands for black. The harder the lead, the lighter the grey. In terms of working in layers, which is what I like to do, the beauty of that is that you can lay down very, very soft pencil lines. I don't even think the camera is going to be picking that up at the moment. The, are barely noticeable but allows you to do all of your layout work very easily. Next up we have HB. HB is the go-to for nearly everyone. It's the one you find in every supermarket, on every shelf and in every kid's pencil case. HB stands for hard black. It is your middle pencil. As opposed to the 2H you can see it's a little bit darker but it's still very grey. Just going to run a few lines here. These are getting picked up a little bit more, but still fairly flexible in terms of what you can do. It's not a super dark pencil. Next is the 2B. As I said earlier, the B means black, so as you go up in scale in your Bs, the deeper the black becomes. I have used the same pressure on every stroke here. You can see this one's a hell of a lot darker by comparison. I can still knock it back pretty easily. But it doesn't quite push back as far as the other ones do. So better pencil for your mid-range work when you're building your main rendering and finishing touches. 4B. This is the darkest pencil I normally work with. Once you cross over past 4B, while they do get darker, they also become very, very shiny. Not the sort of thing that you want in most drawings, so be really, really cautious if you decide to go heavier than a 4B. Just doing the same thing, doing the lines back to knock them down. You still get a fair bit of control over it but not to the same extent as what we've got in the other grades. So this is for your darkest points. Pretty much put it in only when needed. Next we're just going to do a basic pull through. So what that is is laying the pencil flat to the paper, starting fairly dark and just softening it off. And what you'll see is the way the pencil changes as we step through from the grades in terms of how they react to the paper. So you can see immediately the difference. The 4B is much smudgier I suppose you'd say doesn't carry a very clean line. The 2B is a lot crisper. 
into the HB, same deal. I'm doing all of this in an underhand motion, so I'm basically holding my pencil just like so. All the pressure is nice and low to the paper using my forefinger here to rest on while my main finger gets there and puts the pressure down on the pencil. And finally, back to the start at our 2H. So you can see there's a fair bit of graduation between those pencil grades there. Just so you know what's happening. That was our 2H, H, B was next, 2B, and finally 4B. I'm going to look at some basic rendering techniques. One that does get used very often is hatching. So hatching is quite simply just a whole heap of lines in one direction with lines going in another direction to create density of strokes. That's a standard crosshatch. While can be used for certain things, I actually prefer working with what I call a diagonal hatch where you're running your first set of lines and then pulling across those lines. And even from there, you can keep building density using variations of those angles, just constantly changing the angle ever so slightly against itself to get graduations through. As you can see, there's a huge amount of difference in terms of what you can produce with that. So, cross hatching. And diagonal. Stippling is another one that does get used very often. Stippling is quite simply dots, working a whole heap of dots or short marks to create your texture. This can be done very mechanically or like what I'm doing here, can be used to work with short fur for example, really simple technique to get those sort of things. So I'm just going to keep lightening this off as we come down. And the more space you leave between those marks, the more effective it becomes. So that is the stipple. Obviously, you can always go back to, like what we did in the drag downs just a few minutes ago, a flat shading. Just gently lifting the pencil up as you go. As we did with the diagonal hatch, this can be done with multiple layers as well. It actually works best if you do it with multiple layers. Just constantly changing the angle. Great for creating smoother form. So that's flat shading. 
just using the base of your pencil to do the work. Next we'll move on to looking at how we put these into work.